it's Anne from the Useless Crafter. Today we're going to be doing a cake topper for Christmas. Um, I know how much everyone loves the Grinch and it just feels like we need something extra for Christmas. I've never, I don't think I've ever really done a cake topper for Christmas, but why not? <laughs> and the reason is um, I did this Halloween one because I felt the same way. It's like, you know, my daughter didn't get to go trick-or-treating, so what are we going to do? Like, let's have a Halloween cake and make it extra. So, um, so I figured the same thing for Christmas. Um, let me talk you through this. So I have not, I always do, um, the assembly video first so that when I do the design space tutorial, um, I can make either changes or I can actually show you like what it looks like already. So in this case, what I found was I had to make a lot of adjustments. I was going for like a fun, colorful, Merry Christmas. So like I went with the white and kind of like fun greens, I want to call it. So it was originally just this. And um, it looked really plain. And I realized what it is, is that normally I have lots of layers. So this is going to be a shaker, but I normally have at least one more layer behind. So I feel like with the offset, you know, like the outline, um, kind of like this one's not my typical one either, but it has a lot of layers in a sense where you have um, a lot of dimension, like a lot of, do you see how it's like? It's not flat. So you, in the back, you have the moon and then you have the bats on top, but still even more forward is the house. And then the characters are sitting on top of the house. So there's just a lot of layers going on while I'm not really feeling the layers here. And I think that's kind of what was missing. So that's why I went back and I cut a Christmas tree to go in the back so that it's just one more layer. And what you may not think one more layer does that much, but in person, what would happen is then my, I'm going to make my white stand up a little bit because I'm going to put the glue dots and make it stick up. And then each letter is going to be sticking up a little bit more. So all of a sudden I have a lot more layers. Same thing with the hand. I'm going to have that back, that black background stick up a little bit and then each piece stick up a little bit more. So everything's going to kind of like lift itself up and feel like it's a little bit more than just a flat cake topper. So I liked it much better with this green Christmas tree in the back. I'm hoping it all comes together. Um, and I think it'll look a lot better once we do the, um, the shaker as well. So actually let's do the shaker first. Um, well, you want your glue gun because I'm going to be using the glue gun to add depth to everything. So here is our cake, to um, even our shaker. So with our shaker, what I did was I did a print and cut of the Grinch because I thought it would be funny that he's stealing this ornament where it has his picture in it. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't really make sense from a story standpoint, but I just thought it was cute. So let's work on this first. So the first thing is let's tape him down. So for him, I'm just going to do this. I love it. If you watch me, I don't like using glue. I like using tape. So and I didn't mind, so this is the back of my shaker. I don't mind that it gets these glue things because what's gonna happen is I'm gonna put the Grinch down and he's gonna have glue around and it's gonna be okay because it's gonna keep this, um, the glitter and the sequins kind of up here, which is good because <clears throat> it's one thing like when you're moving the, the shaker um, so all the glitter and sequins move around, but once you put it in the cake and it's standing straight up, all your glitter and stuff is going to fall down. So you're going to want to do a little glue or a little tape to get some of these things to stick up here so that there's always something going on. So I'm just going to do a few around. Okay. Next thing is we want our foam down. So we're going to, um, let me grab a piece of paper. Oh, here we go. On this one, I'm not going to want this. So I'm going to move this over. You want to get a really good seal all around your foam. So the foam I bought online on Amazon. So if you need to go buy that, um, it's listed on my Amazon shop. So it's amazon.com slash shop slash the useless crafter. So, um, and everything's by category, like project categories. So this would be under cake 
cake toppers. Um, all right, so I have a really good seal down. I'm going to put it around my circle. Okay, so that's down really well. I'm now going to put in my sequins. So the sequins as well, I bought on Amazon. They were really, really cheap, and you can get a really good variety. Um, I ended up buying a slime kit. So these are all things that you would put in slime, which I thought was so funny. I, did, I had no idea. Um, so I'm doing a little bit of red and green, of course. And I thought the red is cute because they're actually red hearts. So if anybody sees it, um, it's just a funny touch. <laughs> and then I'm going to have white as well, white hearts. And then I'm going to put some white little sequins in there. And then I'm going to dump in some glitter. So the thing with shakers is um, you want to go heavy on the inside because it's going to look really dull and spare, sparse. Um, if you don't put enough. So I'm going to put my nice chunky ones in first and then I'm going to pour in the glitter. So the glitter is the one that I um, usually dump in a lot of. So in this case, I'm probably going to do, I'm going to do like a light, a fluorescent green. This is the same one that I used for his face ornament. It's from Arteza or Arteza. I'm not really sure. Um, and it's the neon green. And I'm pretty sure I bought this when Michaels had it on sale. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm going to actually run the glue <clears throat> on my foam. So I purposely put all the sequins in the middle. If you, if you kind of just poured it in, you wanna make sure that you move it to the center Otherwise, it's going to have a tendency to jump around a little bit and hop onto this little um, wall of glue tape that we've got going on. And you don't want that because obviously you want a really good seal so that you don't have um, leakage, sequence liquid, leakage. <laughs> all right, so I think I've got it all around. I'm now going to press down on my acetate layer. and. This is not regular acetate paper. Um, I use, hold on, let me move this around a little bit. Um, I use, ooh, it's a lot, okay. There, you can kind of see him now. Um, I use, uh, it's a book, uh, what is it? I'm losing my mind. It's uh, sheet protectors, Avery sheet protectors. And um, it gets, it's much cheaper and it works the same as acetate paper. So, sorry, I'm losing my head there. Okay, um, I put too much sequins in, so it kind of popped up and it's causing a little hole right here. So what I'm gonna do is, I wanted to press it down, but I'm just gonna run it right here with a little bit of glue. Okay. All right, so we leave that, and then this is, going to go on top so it's our little cover it looks really cute can you see that <laughs> so okay we're going to put this layer on top this one I'm just going to put Okay, so we've got this down. Um, all right, so now what we want to do is we want to do, we want to put, use the glue gun and put basically glue dots behind everything to give it that and let it dry. And that will give us the space that we need between each layer. So you can use tape, um, like the foam squares and stuff like that. I really like using my glue gun because it allows me to go into the spaces like tiny spaces so you want to create those little dots and then you let it rest I'm gonna get some more glue um I really like using my glue gun and it's just easy to 
make it really big and I can stack it and no one can really see it. So that's there. All right, so here I'm gonna do it. All right, and I just realized I can still see um, some of the cutouts are still in the Grinch's hand, so I'm just gonna pop it out. So we have the glue dots there. We're gonna want it on this as well. So I'm gonna turn this around and so everything is gonna go to the back, flipped over, and we're gonna add our little spacers. And you want to create, um, I mean, you don't have to go overboard, but like for this hand, I am putting three big ones because I don't want it to be um, in balance. So that way it's going to lay flat. All right, so we've got this. We have to do all the letters. So I'm just going to flip all the letters over right now. And... Oh my gosh, what is going on? This is, it's creepy. <laughs> All right. I'm going to keep them in order because then we don't have to worry about it later. And so I'm going to put my dowel on the Christmas tree. So I'll show you how to do that as well. So let's put it behind here. And on this one, I'm not even sure where it's gonna be. So maybe right down the middle. Okay. And once your glue dots dry, you can actually add another set of glue dots on top and it will just dry higher and that'll just give you even more space. Okay, so we've got this. I'm going to move this to give us more room. Okay, and then now all we have left are the letters. So the letters, I'm just gonna do maybe one dot and I'll show you how to balance it with just one dot. It's still, we can still make it happen. And I get a lot of questions on my glue gun. So this is Lynn Lilly's, uh, it's by Shorebonder. It's cordless, which is nice. It has a fine tip, also nice. And it's cute color. But here's the stand. The stand is kind of cool because it has a little catcher for your drippings and then um, you can just easily put it down. So I really, really like this. All right. So the M, I have two little dots. All the other letters has one. And this color runs out a lot. So... Um, and I love it so much that I'm paranoid. I got a backup one in just plain, I think it's black or green, I can't remember. But it's the, literally the same design, it's just not the cute color. So um, I would say buy it if this, this color, I mean it's so cute, but it's such an awesome glue gun that you need it right away. And no, I don't get anything from promoting her glue gun. It's just a good product. Okay. I don't even think she follows me on Instagram. 
All right. Okay, so everything is down. So let's do, let's put it on last where we wanna do it. But right now let's work on, let's make sure that these are dry. Okay, so that's dry. Let's put on our hand. So our hand, and if you can see, I made the bulb much bigger, but I kept this and it, because it was a circle, it was easy just to make make one that still fit. So you see, I didn't need that that background. I just needed this top part. So, all right. Um, so this is gonna go down. So let's add the glue that actually we're gonna use to stick this time. So I just put it on top. And I'll flip this up so you can see. Um, there, you see how there's space? So it may not seem like a lot, but every little bit adds, and all of a sudden you have a very um, cool cake topper with a lot of a lot of depth, and it feels a little bit more fancy and, and expensive, <laughs> in my humble opinion. <laughs> all right, so let's add the rest of this um, of the sleeve so all this stuff on the Grinch is super easy because it's only a few pieces um, so put down your glue and then when you go to place it hold on when you go to place it just make sure that you keep your finger on the on the glue dot and let it dry the whole piece parallel so that it's not you don't have a hand like this sleeve like this. You wanna make sure that it's there's height, but that it's the whole piece is even. Um, this one was already dry and it was pretty, pretty flat and even. Okay, so here's our white piece. Um, why does that not look right? Because it goes like this. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put the hand down first. So here's the hand, all right. This one is not balanced, so I'm gonna make sure that I keep my finger on here until it dries. Okay, there we go. All right, now we're gonna put this little guy on. So you, if you look at the image that I bought, the file that I bought, the cuff is in two pieces, and I really didn't wanna deal with two pieces. The hand is in four pieces, and I didn't wanna do that. So what I did was I grabbed a circle and I welded it together so that the two pieces became one cuff. And then the hand, same thing. I added like a little circle here and a little circle here, and I added all the fingers to be one piece. Um, it just makes it so much easier to deal with uh, one piece instead of, instead of four, two to four. All right, so. All right, so the hand's down. Next is we'll put the shaker on. I think the shaker is really cute. Um, okay, so we're gonna put it on like this. So. Just put our glue down. And then all we have left are the letters. So, um, I think I started with this one. So this goes up, goes up on top. And because we have the offset, you know exactly where things go. So it's super easy. Um, but like I said, I probably, if I had 
spent more time just thinking about this cake topper instead of just doing it, I, I probably would have done another offset of the letters so that it would have just been another set of letters that looked really pretty and it would have given you a little bit more to go on. Um, oops, wrong set, this one. And um, if you, so in Design Space, when I do the tutorial, um, I'll show you the SVG file that I use. Um, I worked with a friend on Creative Fabrica and we created the foam circles so that it's easy. It's easy both ways. If you don't want to create all the little um, open circles and the layers to do the foam, you can just buy it for a dollar off of Creative Fabrica. And we'll show you how to resize it and everything. Or you can follow along and make it with me. Um, I already have that video, so you could definitely go to that video to see how to do it. Okay. And with Mary as well. So I did not make the letters straight because I feel like it's so much easier when it's not straight. Then you can do whatever and not worry about it. So I did Mary that way, and then the next Mary is gonna be the dark one, so it's this one. Um, if you're wondering where I got the font, the font is from Dafont, D-A-F-O-N-T dot com, and it's the Grinch 2.0. So you see I'm keeping my finger on the bubble or the glue dot over here um, just to make sure that it's even, the whole E, because there's only one glue dot. All right, so here goes this one. put this down first because I'm not sure where I want this R to go. <laughs> it's got glue string and it's acting like it's possessed. So okay, let's do the next set. Um, actually, let's go backwards on this one. So let me know if you use foam squares, um, if you prefer that over my glue method. Because I, I don't know, I bought some recently, so I'm gonna give it a try and see if I still like this more. But I feel like this is faster than peeling off the tape, putting it down and then peeling off the tape for it to stick and then trimming it in case you need to, so. Okay, almost done. Okay, so I'm gonna have this M go under the shaker a little bit. Which means this Y I'm gonna have maybe by the finger more. So this is all set. 
So now I kind of, I don't want to make this so even. I also want to make my Christmas tree like um, very clear that it's a Christmas tree because if I went like this, I feel like it's too covered. So I sort of want to go at an angle, also not make it so straight. I think this looks good. All right, so let's glue this down. So now that it's glued down, let's turn this over. And we know that the Mary Mary is at a, at a slant. So let's look at the bottom of this Christmas tree and let's make this Christmas tree what's gonna be straight. So I like using it on my grid right here. So I'm gonna move it up. I'm gonna center it completely. So my dowel is gonna go right down this line. It's gonna be very centered and I have an end right here, so this gives me enough space. And this gives me enough um, like stability to hold up my cake topper. I also know that because I did a full offset and this gigantic Christmas tree, my, my cake topper is not gonna be flimsy and flip over. So, um, all right, so using this as a guide, I'm gonna take my glue gun and I'm just gonna go down one side And then I'm gonna go up the other side. So it looks clean. It's just a dowel in the back. Um, you, you know, it's totally up to you whether you want to do another Christmas tree and just put it on top so you can't see the dowel. Um, I do most of my cake toppers like this because it goes in, no one's taking a picture from the back and um, I haven't had any complaints. Uh, I think as long as you're upfront on your Etsy shop or in your messaging, like what it's gonna look like, then you're fine. All right, so I'm gonna flip this over. All right, so here is our, see, it's super stable. I don't wanna shake it just yet because it's still, <laughs> the glue is still drying on the dowel. But there you have it. I hope this was helpful in how to build something and then how to make changes once you've already cut it um, because I always piece things together just to make sure like are the colors okay um, do I want to make any changes because sometimes I've definitely done it where the colors don't look right and I need to recut you know maybe change it to blue maybe change this white to um, to glitter cardstock um, and I did that here because I thought the black was a little bit too harsh and I thought okay maybe I'll change it to the gray but then the gray looked really weird so there you have it it's like it's a lot of um, still working around the whole piece until you finally like everything so for me like when I'm developing the cake toppers it's definitely hours on hours and I make changes to it after I cut it after I put it together and I realize like maybe the sizing is off so it's you know, it's totally a different thing to imagine it and then to create it in design space. And then once, you know, all the colors are put together, you can do all that prep work and it still doesn't look good. So um, there are always changes like until the end. So, <laughs> all right, let me know what you think. Give me the feedback I, you know, want to know. And then um, if you have any special requests, I'm also here for that. So please post your comments and then um, you can always send me an email with the extra details to Anne, A-N, at theuselesscrafter.com. All right, see you guys next time.